Hello and welcome to Live and Local for the City of Ramsey. I'm your host, Winter Kuharski. We are in the beautiful city of Ramsey today at the Draw Amphitheater on this very sunny, very warm day today to talk, of course, all things Ramsey. We have some great guests, both from the City Council and our city staff, and some wonderful packages that we've produced about local businesses and more. Stay tuned because Live and Local Ramsey starts right now. Again, thank you so much for joining us on Live on Local Ramsey. Our first guest we have outside today at the draw with us is our city administrator, Brian Hagen. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, good afternoon. So it's we are in the core. We are in this like wonderful space that we have. There's so much potential, so much going on. I want to talk all things core of Ramsey. Yeah, well, uh, one item, we're here at the amphitheater. So one thing we've been doing every summer is holding the weekly concerts, and those are Thursday evenings. Mm -hmm. Uh, we still have a few concerts left, so we'd encourage people to come out and enjoy those. Uh, but some other exciting news that we have going on, people have probably noticed, but there's been a lot of trees cleared and a lot of grading work that's going to be uh, done. What we're doing is we're, we're digging out, a, in essence, a big stormwater pond, so that way in future developments they can utilize more of their property and, and they'll, they'll pipe all their stormwater to a regional pond system. Our plan around that is to make it into more of a waterfront regional park. So we'll have some added public amenities there. Um, you know, can't make too many promises because we're still finalizing the design, but uh, some some long long-standing plans include a splash pad there and possibly a, a, some type of community center building, maybe a restaurant component to it, some some other public playground amenity type type improvements as well. Mm -hmm. I know that's uh, been a, a something on a lot of people's minds is that community center, that community aspect. Uh, so it's nice to hear that it's like the, you, as a city, you're like, we hear you, we're on it. Just, you know, sometimes things take a little bit of time. Yeah, it, it has taken some years, but it, it has been on the radar for mm -hmm. a number of years as well. Fantastic. I think what I like about splash pads is that you can bring all ages to them and not really have to worry about like especially if you have like multiple kids yeah. where it's like if you got a little kid and like one kid that knows how to swim that you can everybody can like be cool and like be you know outside and in the water but you don't have to worry about like the kids swimming out to like the deep end and then having them to go get them so that i'm a big fan of splash pads personally exactly and, and when you go to them i mean who doesn't have a smile on their face exactly right? exactly it's wonderful um so if somebody were um Wondering about, you know, you t we talked about splash pad, stormwater pond. Um, are there like, is there some info online, some drawings, some renderings? Where can we find out some more info about that? Uh, we we do have a little bit of information. I mean, again, right now it's it's more, you know, idea phase. So, you know, to, to put some plan out there, it's it's going to change by the time it, it gets to construction phase. Mm -hmm. But we, we've had a couple renderings in our packet. But, you know, again, to note, we're, we're planning that splash, splash pad. We want to utilize the stormwater pond as well, maybe provide some kayaking or paddleboarding opportunities. That'll you be know, fun. Try to utilize some of that infrastructure that isn't always the most exciting, but... Um, you know, we're hoping that the, the pond is dug deep enough where you're not gonna necessarily have the algae blooms that often come with the stormwater pond and, and having an actual water feature that people wanna be by and we'll have trails around it and, and connect it to the more larger regional trail system as well. Oh, that just sounds so wonderful. And uh, I, I mentioned, that you, well, you mentioned that there's some info online, but of course, all of the planning commission meetings, the city council meetings, the entire process yeah. is televised and covered by QCTV. So, I mean, if you're watching this show right now, you are already on the right channel uh, to be watching any of our city meetings, um, you know, to, and of course, attend city meetings, you know, mm -hmm. community center, bring our community together, hearing that feedback, um, wonderful way to stay informed and, and get involved, of course. Absolutely. Excellent. So uh, we mentioned the concerts that are taking place um, here at the Drive Theater. Another big event that happens in Ramsey at the end of the summer is Game Fair. Um, can you tell me some more about that? Yeah, Game Fair, it's put on by Armstrong Kennels. They're, they're a long-standing business located in Ramsey, actually opened up before Ramsey was a city. Oh, wow. Um, and Game Fair itself have been going on for a number of decades. They host it the second and third weekends in August. It's a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday event. 
uh, very family oriented, uh, geared towards the outdoors, you know, hunting, fishing activities like that. But, you know, they, they have vendors from all over the world, actually. We, we met with the organizer this morning and he noted one, one exhibitor is coming from Finland. So wow. uh, it, it's definitely a worldwide draw. Um, he, he, <clears throat> Excuse me, he noted uh, last year, in, in recent years, he had a, a person drive down in her RV from Alaska with wow. her dog just to come to the event. So, and so you think that people would be going up to Alaska for the outdoors kind of thing. So you think, you know, Alaska, this kind of, you know, wild place, but well, that's, well, that's fun to know. It, it's large. They, yeah. they draw about 40,000 people over the two weekends. So, so. It, like, I don't know the population of Ramsey. I should know that off of the top of my head. It was like, what, d doubles? Uh, the, yeah. the... So we're almost 30,000 people. Okay, yeah. So over the two weekends, you know, more people come to town. It's local people as well. But, of course, you know, yes. Than, than Ramsey itself. Right. So. Uh, speaking of local, our local... You know, him and Raven are... Yeah. You can't have you can't have round without Raven. So uh, not to say that he's going to be there, but I, I've been to Game Fair um, a couple years in the past that I, I you know run into to Ron Chera and you know local local Ramsey celebrity. Yeah, I know he 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 does he does live in town. He's mm -hmm. very involved in in that aspect of you know fun and things of that nature. And he's a a very good family friend of of the Armstrong Kennels. Of course, of course. Um, and if if you're a dog owner. Um, I mean, even if you're not competing in any of the uh, dock diving or uh, retrieving activities, everybody brings their dog. And yep. it's, I mean, I'm, I'm a dog lover, so I, I go sometimes to just be like, I just want to see all the dogs. <laughs> yeah. Just note that make sure you have your rabies vaccination course, information, yes. veterinary information. They do check in all the dogs, so mm -hmm. they're, they're able to track that. And But no, I, from my understanding, they've never had any major issues with all the dogs that come, come with their their owners and it's a great family event it really is uh i was actually able to um as an outdoors person myself i have uh i don't want to promote any one brand but they have such a wide variety of uh dog products and you know from kennels and chews and leashes mm -hmm. and hunting equipment i was uh, it's really nice to get a hands-on look at the kennel yeah. so i could you know i was actually able to see if it would fit in my vehicle so yeah. you know if you know there's some uh, outdoorsman uh, vendors that are going to be there they you know they let you try out their products before you buy it I'm, I'm a big fan yeah online is nice but I you know I really like trying out stuff before I buy it and it's it's right it's right here it's right down the way it's yep. it's what a maybe five minute drive from the draw it's you know maybe two turns off yeah. of highway 10 nice and close yeah. ample parking so tons of parking yes it you know it's, it's that open part of Ramsey so you know People are wrenching out their lawns like they do with the state fair. We'd love to see they it. They do, they do. Speaking of uh, state fair and, you know, uh, food trucks and parades and all sorts of fun stuff, uh, Ramsey's Hometown Festival also happens at the end of summer. Can you tell me some, some a bit about that? Happy Days, it's the 25th year Happy Days has been going on. So exciting. So that, that is the uh, September 9th, mm -hmm. and we've got a, a whole day full of activities like in the past. We have made some changes though, so you know, the parade was moved up for, or earlier in the day. Mm -hmm. That's going to start at 11 o'clock. So if you're used to coming in the afternoon, be mindful of that. Mm -hmm. And then another major change we made is to bring in more live music throughout the day. Uh, that starts about 2 o'clock in the afternoon and goes into the evening. We will, of course, still have fireworks. Yay. Um, <laughs> but we're, we're going to have a, a whole gamut of kid activities from the bounce houses and, and some outside, more carnival-style games. So mm -hmm. uh, come on down and check all that out as well. Um, and then it's not, it, it's right in line with the happy days, but our, our fire department or the fire relief association, they put on the, their 9-11 Memorial Golf Tournament. That'll be the following Sunday. Mm -hmm. uh, there's still spots, so if people want to register, they can definitely sign up and golf in that event and show their support and, and all that stuff. And Ramsey has a couple different golf courses. Which golf course is that one held at? Uh, it'll be at uh, North Links. North Links, so. fabulous, and spots available. And and we were, again, yeah, um, it's, I mean, that's, I always mention about Ramsey, the thing that I love is that it's, it's rural and urban. It's, the residents will mention this too, where it's like it multiple golf courses, like the sheer amount of like space, outdoor, 
just love that this city has. Like I said, we're, we're right in front of the draw. There's paths that run mm -hmm. around this. Oh, that's so wonderful. Yeah, so um, uh, remind me when Happy Days is again? Uh, September 9th. September 9th, fantastic. And of course, QCTV will be covering the parade as well. Um, if you happen to be out of town or just like watching parades from home, it's um, a great way to check it out. Remember, 11 o'clock, which is different from uh, the normal parade time. And of course, it'll be on QCTV. So, um, Brian, we are just out of time. I could chat with you all day, I'm sure, but I want to thank you so much for being our, our return guest on Live and Local. If you'll remember, yes. he was, what, second, third day on the job, and we're like, let's put him on Live <laughs> and Local. So, obviously, we haven't uh, you know, traumatized you too much that we, we're, we're, we, we've got you back. Yeah, not at all. Love to come on and share what's going on in the community and, and fun and exciting events coming up. Fantastic. Thank you so much. We've got a uh, great package coming your way uh, about the water treatment plant, and you'll see a, a bit more of Brian on that. And so let's take a look. We're out here today at our groundbreaking ceremony for our new water treatment facility. Uh, this project has been in the making since about 2004 when the city first started putting away funds for it. Uh, it's always been known that we'll need a facility someday and then in 2019 the state uh, let us know that we started testing for unhealthy levels of manganese in our water. So we, we really kicked off the plans to look at what does this facility look like from a design perspective, how is it going to filter this water to provide that clean drinking water to our community. And we, we came up with the, the design, what we need to do to filter it. And over the last couple of years, we've really been working on uh, the finer details of the, the facility, uh, how big is it going to be, uh, how many gallons per day. So we're able to provide up to 10 million gallons of clean drinking water per day with this facility. Uh, the project is going to be about a two-year construction window. Uh, we, we have been uh, very, very uh, fortunate to get some state funding assistance through this project. So through the years, we were able to save up uh, a considerable amount of money, uh, an amount that we thought would be able to fully fund the project. Unfortunately, with the, the high construction costs the last couple of years, we, we did have to uh, kind of look at an alternative funding source. So we worked with our state lawmakers. We received $3.2 million in, in state bonding proceeds in, during the 2023 legislative session, as well as a sales and use tax exemption. So that, that money savings right there will directly benefit the, the users of this. The this facility is paid for by the water users, so not the general taxpayer. Um, so th what that means is any any additional funding that we don't have to come up with, we'll be able to hopefully keep those rates down and, and have a, a smaller impact on the end users. Uh, again, it's going to be a two-year construction window, so we're excited that we're going to be able to provide the clean drinking water, albeit it won't be tomorrow, but know that we're working, we're working hard on getting that done as soon as we can. I would say our best point of contact would be Bruce Westby, our, our public works director and city engineer. He's really going to be the director over this facility and, and members of his team and his divisions. Uh, you can always reach out to me as well. Otherwise, our community development department definitely knows all the details of the plans as well. Again, just know that uh, we're, we're looking at what our residents need. It's a core service that we need to provide of this clean drinking water. And, and uh, we also have high hopes that clean drinking water will, will also spur some other economic development. And I, I think one of the uh, very popular question is, you know, why is my water turning a different color? This will help eliminate that as well. Though it's not a health threat, we, we recognize the aesthetics of clean drinking water and that will help take care of that as well. Special shout out to my coworker Billy Austin for getting that drone footage for me. It is uh, I'm I'm a big fan of watching uh, construction projects in process uh, from above, so that was wonderful. And our next guest we've got here it is Cindy, city engineer, public works director, lots of titles, Mr. Bruce Westby. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. So you were also out at the the water treatment plant uh, groundbreaking that we had. It's you know right across the street from the public works facility, which is also you know, pretty new building, um, and you've got some some feedback about the building. Tell me about that that public works building. Uh, well, the public works facility is, is fantastic to work from. The guys and, and uh, gals that work there are just so excited to be working from that. It's so much more efficient and effective for what we do, so mm -hmm. I just can't say enough about having that facility. Um, it's It really is a great space. If you haven't had an opportunity, um, they had some uh, an open house when it was first we open. Did. Um, a space for all of the trucks, for all of the maintenance equipment. You're not having to go to that building and 
that building and your office is a little bit nicer than a construction trailer. <laughs> Correct. We can operate out of one site, everybody under one roof. It's yes. really nice, really effective. It's fantastic. Um, another really cool thing that I love about the public works facility is the, the power lifts are actually able to get underneath the city's um, like big tanker fire trucks as well. Um, so all the maintenance, the cleaning that needs to be done on those, um, the snow plows, everything, it is all in-house. It's just a, such a wonderful facil facility. I'm, I'm glad that, that, that you guys are finally, it's, it's finally done and you got it and it's, it's wonderful. And right across from the water treatment plant. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, as public works director, city engineer, you've got a lot of roles uh, in our city. And one thing that it's kind of on a lot of people's minds, it being Minnesota, you probably hear a lot about those potholes, but the city's got a plan. Can you tell me some more about that? Absolutely. So this winter was uh, one of the winter. Uh, this winter was one of the worst on record, obviously. As Offense! Everybody, How dare you as, say that as, about me in public? <laughs> as everybody knows, uh, one of the snowiest, one of the wettest, uh, had most, you know, a lot of rain and had a lot of freeze thaw cycles. So um, this winter produced a lot of potholes this spring. So we went right from a lot of snow plowing to a lot of pothole patching. Uh, our crews are not really equipped to do that much pothole patching. So this year, for the first time ever, we had to go out and hire contractors to do mm -hmm. pothole patching. Uh, so it, uh, we weren't prepared for it heading into the spring. So it took us a while to get geared up, find all those contractors, mm -hmm. get in touch with them, uh, try and figure out how much it was going to cost to do all these different types of pothole patching um, services. So uh, we've spent and will probably have spent right around a million dollars on contracted Ooh. pothole patching this spring that is and summer. Significant um, amount for sure, but it, it's... it is a lot of money. And uh, so we are we we've, we've learned from that and we are getting um, our ducks in a row. So mm -hmm. next spring we aren't uh, caught by surprise again if it happens. So uh, mm -hmm. it's been a learning experience, but we have learned from it. Well, and like you said, it was one of the worst ones. Like, how do you prepare for that? There's there's no way that you could have possibly predicted that. Mm -hmm. And the city, like, I see crews out every single day filling those potholes. Um, there's, I do believe, Ramsey, is, a, is there a hotline that people can call or somebody that, like, there's a way to let the city know. Like, if if, but uh, believe me, like the city knows where the potholes are. There is, um, there is. They can just call Public Works and let us know if they have any questions, and we will uh, we will respond and and uh, let them know, and we'll be out to address their concerns. So. Of course, of course. And um, in addition to filling in those potholes, um, maintaining the the city roads is of course a, a huge undertaking as well. And the city has a plan to take care of all of our roads. So what's what's included in the plan beyond potholes? So right now we, we have a 10-year capital improvement plan, mm -hmm. and that includes all of our pavement management program projects. And uh, right now we're looking over the next 10 years, either overlaying or reconstructing about 45% of all of the city's streets. And, and how many miles is that? About 186 miles of paved roads right now. That's, so that's quite, so that's about 45% of those. Mm -hmm. So roughly 90 miles, 80, 85 to 90 miles of roads are going to be overlaying and reconstructing in the 10 mm -hmm. years. So, And those are really the roads that we're finding the issues with the potholes on. So we're just trying to hold those roads together mm -hmm. until they can be improved. Excellent. And I, I love hearing that the the Public Works Department is as involved as you guys are. Like I said, I'm, I'm seeing crews out every single day. I, um, uh, did a, a story about some of the new equipment that the city has purchased to help um, you know mm -hmm. get all that gunk out of there and then put the uh, I'm not I'm not a public works person I don't know all the technical terms but grinding up that concrete and you know getting out of there and putting the new stuff on there and it's, it's actually it's, it's really fun to watch <laughs> so um, we, we of course appreciate all the hard work that our crews are doing out in the community um, to get those potholes filled in because I mean it's 90 degrees now but before you know it, the snow is going to be here and be. it's going to start right back over again. <laughs> yeah, it will be, unfortunately. That's, but you know what? I think that's just that's just the, the winter that we have to deal with. It is. Excellent. So um, switching gears a bit from city roads, uh, Highway 10, of course, is this big, you know, goes right past the city of Ramsey. And there's some construction down the pipeline for that. Can you tell me some more? Absolutely. Be happy to. So over the next two years, um, you're going to be seeing what happened in Anoka mm -hmm. happened in Ramsey. Uh, basically all the Highway 10 all the way from the Anoka city limits 
past Armstrong Boulevard. That's all going to be uh, reconstructed. Those signal systems are going to be removed. The accurate crossings are going to be gone. Mm -hmm. We're going to grade separate those interchanges or those uh, intersections. Have the um, so Sunfish Lake Boulevard and Ramsey Boulevard mm -hmm. will go over Highway 10. And the same thing will happen at the railroad crossings. We're going to grade separate those railroad crossings. So no more waiting for trains. That's going to be uh, an benefit. awesome benefit. Of, <laughs> yep, but also the the safety and the mobility um, improvements are going to be uh, really great on Highway 10. So um, that's the work that's going to be going on over the next two years. Sunfish Lake Boulevard will be in 2024. Mm -hmm. That's the impetus of, of that yep. uh, work. And then 25, most of the work's going to move to Ramsey Boulevard. So gotcha. um, hopefully by spring of 26, it's going to be a nice free flowing corridor. I think, yeah, because you, cause you you'd literally, there would be no stoplights until you get to Elk River then, right? Because like you, you're, the I ability, believe it's 170th, I yeah, think it is. Yeah, you can get on Highway 10 from the 610 split and go all yep. the way through. Like, I mean, I, I, I'm not the fan of the stoplights either, but that train crossing, that, that's what gets you. Because it's like, I you can kind of predict like the traffic flow, like, oh, yep. like, you know, rush hour, you know, the morning rush hour, but like, the trains, like I'm sure they are on a schedule, but I haven't figured it out yet. So just being able to drive right over the train tracks are, that that is probably my favorite part. Is that also something that you're looking forward to? Or Abs maybe? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, it takes a lot of, uh, Oh, yeah, so right now those are called quiet zones. Mm -hmm. they have, so we've been, every couple of years, we have to go through the process of re-implementing those quiet zones with the railroad companies. So. Mm -hmm. That'll no longer, uh, we won't have to worry about that. We won't have to worry about gate arms being stuck down and people starting to turn around mm -hmm. and try and figure out how to get out of there. So it's gonna be really nice. I'm definitely looking forward to it. Uh, so we took a look at the, the water treatment plant. Um, we had some drone footage. Um, is there anything particular that you wanna share about our, our water treatment plant? Like, Cause it is like, right next door to the public works facility it is i mean that's going to be a great addition uh if you know we've we've been planning for this water treatment plant for decades mm -hmm. uh, we've been actually taking some of the uh, funds some of the uh, money that has been collected from water users and putting it towards this site so we've been saving for this for a long time planning mm -hmm. for it for a long time uh, the issue with the uh, manganese uh, and working with the department of health the last couple of years to get through that mm -hmm. that's really what's driving this right now but um, it's going to be a great addition, um, removing iron and manganese from our water. Uh, it's a 10 million gallon a day plant, so uh, it has plenty of capacity for today. Mm -hmm. We have room for expansion for the next uh, several decades. Oh good, that was going to be so my next question. Yeah, I'm like, well Ramsey's growing, is it, we have to build another one? Nope, you guys have got it covered. Nope, it's <laughs> well planned out and plus we have a little additional property next to it that, you know, if we need to continue expanding or we're always continually monitoring new trends. if. Next year's issue is something other than manganese, mm -hmm. and we need to add processes. Uh, we have the room to do that, and we have a you know a plant that's designed to have those processes added. So fantastic! Well, it was uh, great being at that that uh, groundbreaking, and uh, I'm sure we'll be out there again with uh, some more drone footage. And of, of course, like I said, I'm I'm a big fan of that public works facility, and it's if, if you haven't checked it out, I'm sure if you just sent an email, be like, hey. Can I check it out? Can we see what's going on? I'm sure they'll Absolutely. let you. Absolutely, we'd love that. Excellent. Um, so Bruce, I want to thank you so much for giving us all that information and assuring us like, yes, the potholes are being filled, the, the roads are getting fixed, and, and we'd love to hear it. Absolutely. Maybe not as fast as people would like, but we're getting there with the potholes and we'll be ready for next year. Glad to hear it. We've got another great story. I mentioned Billy Austin at the start of this the interview. We have a package from him now from Adrenaline Sports Center. So let's take a look. So this is what we're doing. We're going one, two, three, four. We're like barely stepping over, so it's tiny. It's a little bit awkward, all right? Here at Ramsey since 2018, um, so we're just over five years old. Total square footage is 56,000 square feet. Uh, our middle area where our bathroom's and office, it's up about 3,000 square feet. So our actual usable space is about 52 to 53,000 square feet that we are actually in use of. The facility was definitely built to maximize the usable space because um, we got to give every square inch to those uh, people that are coming in to use it. In, in general, the idea of the facility is to accommodate youth activities. That's what the, the building was built for, is to provide, especially in the winter time, the space needed for basketball, soccer, lacrosse, basically any type of, of sports training. 
Adrenaline Sports Center in Ramsey features 370 by 170 new turf fields as well as 350 by 75 sports courts, big enough to welcome all sports. Uh, and then events, the event side of our business has definitely taken off now where we are filling up a pretty good chunk of May through October with events. We do everything from smaller craft shows, uh, we host the Ramsey Business Expo, all those are you know four or five hundred people with like 50 to 60 vendors. We'll probably do more than 20 total events here in 2023. Field and court availability varies throughout the year and rentals for more than two hours are welcome as long as they fit into the schedule. Pricing depends on the day, time, and spaces needed. A lot of our big users, our association users, are multi-year contracts. So they're in here using the same field space, the same court space for multiple years. Um, and then everything else is just kind of done season by, by season. So uh, we just added a volleyball group last year. A lot of our groups like that do rent the same time, the same dates uh, throughout the entire winter. And then we kind of put a contract together to that. We also just do regular hourly rentals. We have a lot of groups that just come in, you know, rent court space by the hour or, or field space by the hour just when they need it. Everything's pretty much done through me. We have, actually have two websites. We have our Adrenaline SC. Uh, dot com website which is for the facility in general and then we actually have a specific events website which is adrenalinesteventscom uh, the event website basically lists all the events that are currently scheduled to take place it's easy to find out how to get things done because you just contact me and I'm happy to uh, work things out Thank you so much, Billy, for that package on Adrenaline Sports Center. If you've not checked out the space, it is also the location of the Ramsey Business Expo. So maybe you're not a sports person, but you want to see what the inside is like. Well, stay tuned for the Ramsey Business Expo and it'll, it's a great opportunity to see the inside. So our next guest joining us is the newest city council member, Michael Olson. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, thank you for having me. Well, seeing as how this is your first time on uh, TV, on our cameras, and we are going to throw you right into a live show. That's kind of our, our, our theme here. It's like, oh, brand new to the city. Let's put them on a live <laughs> show. Um, tell us a bit about yourself. Well, like you said, my name is Michael Olson, brand new to the city council in my first year. Um, I have five kids. They're all adults. Well, one's about to be an adult. Um, grown. I have one brand new grandbaby. <gasps> Congratulations. A little less than a year old. So uh, enjoying that. As a family, we enjoy music. Um, we like to get outside, uh, go boating. Uh, my wife loves gardening and uh, we have bird feeders. So Ooh. we get lots of birds around the house and then lots of wildlife that's just natural to Ramsey. Deer walking through the yard and things like that. Mm -hmm. How long have you been a resident of Ramsey? Um, uh, almost 15 years. Excellent. And uh, what's your favorite thing about the city? I, I, the, there's so much to choose from. There I is. There's <laughs> a lot to choose from. Ramsey has a lot to offer. Um, the the core amenities that, that are we're trying to grow mm -hmm. um, are nice to have right there in the backyard. Um, and we live on the edge of where it goes from urban to rural. Mm -hmm. And so we get a flavor of both those pieces. And uh, it's good neighborhood. It sure is. Um, you mentioned that the, the edge of the, the urban to rural, it's probably one of my favorite things about Ramsey too. Um, I grew up in a very small greater Minnesota town oh. and um, recently uh, there were northern lights visible in the sky and I remember you know from my childhood, mm -hmm. oh I'm already out in the middle of nowhere, I can see the sky perfectly. I can see them perfectly in Ramsey too, the brightest I had ever seen them and I'm like this is this is like a bit, this is a city but just down the road, still in Ramsey, yep. farms, you know, open space, and you can see the Northern Lights. Yeah, it's been a good year for Northern Lights, mm -hmm. uh, and you get just a little bit away from the city, you mm -hmm. get rid of the, get away from the uh, light pollution, mm -hmm. and you get good viewing. Yeah, but also, you know, could still hop on Highway 10 and fill up your gas tank. Don't don't have to go far. That's that's like I said, that that urban and rural yep. grouping of Ramsey, love it. Yep. Um, so you said you, you've been a, a resident for 15 years. Um, was there something within that 15 years where you're like that kind of spurred you wanting to run for city council or, or had just always wanted to get involved? And tell me about your city council journey. Well, uh, it actually started in 2020 with a run for mayor, mm -hmm. which I didn't quite nail, but uh, got close. And, that, and it didn't discourage you. It did not discourage me. As a matter of fact, what it did is uh, really enlightened me to the importance of local government mm -hmm. and uh, got involved 
uh, in other government things, political things that I hadn't been before. Mm -hmm. um, so I had a couple of years to get up to my ears and that stuff. And then uh, another race came up and I thought, uh, you know, city council is just a natural progression from my start looking for mayor. Fantastic. Uh, so uh, what are some of the things that have been accomplished by the council that you are most proud of? Well, the biggest thing that I'm happiest about is that the council is unified in tackling the road issues. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, as everybody knows, Ramsey's fallen way behind in road maintenance and repair. Um, and this council is just all on the same page. It's, it's emergency level at this point. We need to take care of it. And we're doing everything we can to do that responsibly. Mm -hmm. I mean, you don't just throw away money, but uh, everything that we can do, we are. Fantastic, love to hear it. And uh, what is, so you, you had the run for, for mayor and then now you're on city council. Is there, um, you know, something in that process that uh, you maybe didn't expect or uh, was, you know, maybe a little bit different um, that you're, you're glad you, you had that, that time to think about and then that, so that, you, that you could approach or, or maybe, um, you know, that you weren't expecting that you tackled anyway? Because it sounds like, you're so, sound like a resilient person to me. <laughs> Um, I, I guess the biggest thing that I, I wrestle with is uh, realizing that I can't fix everybody's individual individual problems. Mm -hmm. um, that's kind of how I'm wired. I like to help people and, and solve problems. But uh, as a member of council, I'm one vote, uh, confined by rules and regulations that we have to follow, mm -hmm. and I'm responsible for the taxpayers' money. Now I'm focused on my ward, Ward One, mm -hmm. um, but at the same time. It's the scope of the entire city and being responsible with the tax dollars that uh, everybody has to pay so that we can do the best things for the city. And uh, as a Ward 1 council member, I focus on things that are in my area. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's, it's a matter of balancing what I want to do versus what I'm able to do. Mm -hmm. So tell me some more about uh, Ward 1. What, what kind of demographic is it? Um, you said it's, you know, because you have to live in the ward that you represent, correct? Correct. Um, so it's a little bit more uh, rural. Um, what are some of the concerns that are brought by your ward? Um, well, roads are number one. I hear about that all the time. <laughs> um, but there are other issues that come up. Um, I, I've got a resident I've been visiting with who has a neighbor with a rooster. Mm -hmm. And it wakes him up at 5 o'clock every morning. And he's asking if there's anything we can do about it. Mm -hmm. So. Um, my role, as I see it, is to communicate effectively and promptly with uh, people who raise concerns and kind of connect the dots with what's possible, mm -hmm. the route to get there. I can't really solve anybody's problem personally, right. but uh, I think communication is the big key. Connecting the, the resident with the resources that the city has. And the city can only do so much too sometimes. That's true. Um, you said that you were, you were personally meeting with this, this individual that, that brought a problem to you, right? You're, you, you are, you are a, a, a person of the people. I am, I am. I enjoy uh, meeting the people. Uh, you know, last night, uh, night to night was great. We got out and, and uh, saw half a dozen or so parties mm -hmm. and, and got to meet people, um, asking if there's anything that the city should be doing or that they would like to see done. Mm -hmm. um, that sounds like we're doing a pretty good job until I got to my own party, then they, <laughs> <laughs> they let me know. <laughs> But uh, it was all in fun. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I, I really enjoy getting out and, and getting face to face with people and seeing what we can do to help them out. That's fantastic. I, I love hearing that from a city council person. Um, I, I'm not a resident of Ramsey, but um, having that, just knowing that the person that was voted into that position, are, is, I think of it as, as uh, you know, they're, they're using the power that they have, you know, wisely and effectively. So that, mm -hmm. that's wonderful to hear from our, our city council member. And, and I'm sure is the, the opinion of, all of our other city council members but i mean hearing it from the source that you're willing to say that out loud mm -hmm. and stand behind what you say that you know if people have issues with the city as a city council member yeah. you are going to listen to them and do as much as you can in with in your position to to help resolve the issue that's wonderful right. to hear thank you and i'm, I'm sure that the, you have a lot of you know plans for the future um as a city council member it sounds like you know one year is one year is not enough. We need some more. Um, oh, for sure. What are some plans for the future? Well, um, 
my hope is that we can get ahead of the road situation and, mm -hmm. and get that to be a settled deal um, where we kind of fall into more of a maintenance rather than the, the panic and emergency that we're in. Mm -hmm. um, I'd really like to see us uh, attract some more uh, businesses to the core, specifically restaurants. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things I hear a lot. We, we need more restaurants. Yes. Uh, we all like to eat. I mean, I have to eat every single day. <laughs> As do I. So, um, you know, it's just a question of, of uh, attracting the right businesses. And, uh, you know, we've got some great things going on. Mm -hmm. um, we've got the hotel coming in, hopefully, and Aldi store. Mm -hmm. And so we're working on it. Working on it. Yep. Excellent. And uh, if anybody has any questions about some of those upcoming projects or the way that the council is approaching them, how is there some, what's your contact for, so people can reach out? Um, if you go to uh, ci.ramsey.us.gov, I think mm -hmm. is the website. And uh, on there you look in the, under the government tab and you can find city council and actually all of the commissions um, have their agendas on there. They have, um, well, you folks, mm -hmm. uh, there's links to, 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 the, the, meetings, to yes. the meetings, anything that's been uh, videotaped. Um, and there's all kinds of resources there on the on the uh, city website. Excellent, yeah, it's cityoframsey.com city of and uh, like I said, under that government tab, uh, reach out if you have any questions or concerns and catch up with all the, the previous meetings and those meetings are open to the public. So um, there's yes, a portion are. in all of them for public input. Um, if there's right. something not on the agenda, uh, they're your council, you, vote, you voted for them. Absolutely. That's, that's why they're there. Yeah. So, uh, Michael, I want to thank you so much for appearing on Live and Local here today and you bet. sharing your thoughts with us. And it was, uh, it was great having, having you here. Thanks for having me. Excellent. So uh, next, we are still in the theme of summer, of course, and Leslie Sowersmith was at a local business to see different ways that you can get out outside and enjoy this beautiful weather. So let's take a look. Lake Region RVs in Ramsey is a small, relationship-based RV dealership focused on 25-foot or less motorhomes. With their consultation approach, they really get to know you and see what you have in mind for your personal RV lifestyle. The, the big thing is, if you take that consultative approach, if we're, if we're talking them through and interviewing them properly, our goal is that they don't have to buy two RVs to find the right one. Their experts in the industry will strive to help you not only find the right motorhome, but find the right price too. So the clientele, it, they're, they're experienced in buying things. They know what uh, um, a good experience is, they know what a bad experience is. Um, service ends up being something that's really important to them. And what they find with us is that, um, that we care and we try hard. And, um, and so the, the client base that, that does shop and buy here, you know, they actually like us. The RVs they sell are self-sustaining, self-contained, self-generating, and state-of-the-art for a variety of adventures. So uh, similar to the van life, that's really what this is because it's built on a van chassis. So it drives like a van. This particular one has a slide out and, uh, which opens up the living space and you know, gives us more of a permanent style bedroom with a, with a residential style bathroom, but we still have you know, solar and big inverter and big batteries and, and, and all the kind of boondock capabilities that anybody would be looking for these days. We have awesome convenience products in here that allow you to bring everything from home into the RV and let it work right off the batteries. So hair dryer, coffee pot, crock pot, Instapot, all those things are gonna be able to just sit on the counter plug into the power and operate right off the batteries with the convenience product that we have. Lake Region RVs make it a painless process and have created many happy customers who found their dream RV. What, what we sell is a relationship with our customers and it's that relationship that leads those awesome Google reviews that I have, that leads me to be the number one customer satisfaction rated dealer on the Leisure Travel Van product across two countries. So, um, so that's the difference and, and what the clients see with us and the experiences that, that maybe make it different here than other places.
So hit the road and head over to Lake Region RVs to talk to Seth or one of their friendly staff members to make the easy choice and enjoy the ride. Thank you so much, Leslie, for filing that report for us. Uh, I'm a big fan of camping, and uh, I just took a, a trip out to the Black Hills, and uh, you know, having one of those you know little campers, everything is there, the, the wheels and the place to stand, um, and it's so it's great that we have a place right here in Ramsey that you can know, check out those models and get, get some more information. So, if uh, you haven't taken a look yet, go ahead and do that. Uh, our final guest joining us on Live and Local today is our very own police chief, Jeff Caters. Thank you so much for joining us. Hey, thanks for having me, Winter. So we are a day after, of course, the big, the big thing in Minnesota that everybody had on their minds. We all knew it was coming. It was Night to Unite. <laughs> yes. Can you tell us some more about that? Yeah, sure. Um, every August, uh, the first Tuesday in August of every year, we have Night to Unite. Some people might um, know a similar event, uh, National Night Out in mm -hmm. previous years but it's an opportunity for our uh, first responders, police, fire, to get out into the community and go to some community hosted parties at people's homes, at churches, uh, different, different places. So yesterday we had 40 parties in the city of Ramsey. Um, so uh, for, as far as the police department, we had 18 um, police uh, staff, uh, including officers, community service officers, reserve officers, and office staff go out to these parties. I was able to get to six of them, six of the 40. Excellent. Um, and I think everybody had a great time. Uh, certainly there's a lot of camaraderie, a lot of uh, uh, neighbors getting together. And that's really the purpose of that event is that neighbors interact with one another, uh, kind of watch out for one another, um, and it helps reduce crime. Um, as I told a lot of people yesterday, um, it, it's great if, if they're able to report suspicious activity and things that happen in their neighborhood and we certainly don't mind going out and checking those things out. So. Excellent. So um, for my uh, personal, my neighborhood night to night event, um, there's a, a lot of dogs and kids in the neighborhood. Um, so again, I mean, you heard me earlier in the show, I, I love dogs. Uh, so, you know, just, uh, you know, to have everybody out and, you know, get to know your neighbors. The amount of people that I know that will have lived in a neighborhood and literally don't know other the people that live right next to them night to night is an excellent way to finally make that connection and of course uh, having the police and fire staff out uh, as well uh, you know wonderful to see of course that community engagement um, is there a favorite part about night to night um, that you look forward to every year well I, I look forward to answering people's questions or see what questions that people have of the police department uh, a lot of times it's an education. They just don't understand how things work. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, what happens when I call 911, you know, and or uh, how come the police officer showed up to the to a medical and, and not just maybe the fire department or the EMS, you know. Um, Ramsey does it a little bit different. Uh, we're, we're dispatched to every medical call mm -hmm. and uh, we had 1,100 of them last year. So a lot of them. Significant amount. Yeah. And uh, but I'll tell you, if we're if we're close and we're not tied up on another call, we want to make sure that we're there first to help the most that we can. So uh, that that was just some of the questions. And then uh, the other questions are just general questions. What's going on with the city? We had our council members out last night mm -hmm. uh, with the police and fire members as well. So just questions of what's going on with the city, um, uh, the roads, uh, projects, what's being built, uh, you know, city activities, events, stuff mm -hmm. like that. So, gotcha. but yeah, I, I really look forward to basically the questions mm -hmm. that people have. Uh, and then uh, of course we get a lot of, our community is so supportive of our um, public safety mm -hmm. and uh, we get a lot of kudos, which it's never hard to hear, so. Well, I mean, I, I, kudos to you for agreeing to appear on camera. Uh, the anecdote that I uh, like to use with uh, police officers, especially is that um, when I approach uh, maybe people that, that are the chief, the chief, he's, he's been around, he knows this, but when I approach officers to appear on camera, um, they're, oh no, they're, you know, kind of, kind of shy about it, kind of want, want, don't want anybody to be on camera. These are people that are literally willing to run into a burning building or go into an unknown situation. No hesitation at all. That's what your, your training is for, but you put a camera in front of your face. And it's a, a little bit hesitant. So I, 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 I appreciate, uh, the, uh, the, the willingness to, for, for you to be on camera. So kudos for that. Kudos to, uh, of course, all of our guests on our show today, but of course, some, <laughs> just some more kudos for you. Thank you. Um, so uh, 
Switching gears a little bit, um, it's summertime, and uh, summertime kind of unfortunately brings some pesky criminals uh, out in the community. It's warm, and that kind of, you know, people are looking for an opportunity, and we don't want to give them the opportunity to maybe steal our bike or break into our car. So what are some summer safety tips so that we don't have to be calling the police department? Sure, I think there's some great preventative measures that people can take, and I think the opportune word that you mentioned was opportunity. Mm -hmm. So um, if we can harden those targets and make it less of a, uh, some crime is a crime of opportunity. They may, people may not commit that crime if it wasn't presented right in front of them. Mm -hmm. And one of the things is locking your doors of your vehicles, uh, making sure that high dollar items aren't clearly visible um, through the window, mm -hmm. um, but locking vehicles. It's, uh, and I, I understand that, that you shouldn't have to lock your vehicle. I, I totally get that. Mm -hmm. But the reality is people will go around and, and try check, doors. Check all yeah. those doors. They'll yeah. see them in parking lots, just checking all those doors. Yep. So th th we do get a lot of that in the summertime. That is one of the things. And then uh, one of the other programs that we, uh, we tell people about, and they can go to our website, uh, is to, if they're on vacation, doing vacation checks, mm -hmm. uh, the, the police department will uh, check on um, people's homes while they're on vacation. Nice. Just ask that they, they give us a, like at least three days to process some of the paperwork, sure. but uh, go online to our website and you should be able to find it. Um, but the other side of that is also uh, just letting trusted friends and neighbors, um, maybe a relative, um, make, make, making your place look like it's uh, uh, currently being occupied. Mm -hmm. And then um, we've had some great advancements with uh, home security systems and cameras and stuff like mm -hmm. that. And a lot of those are deterrents as well. But uh, one of the big deterrents is people don't like to commit crime um, in well lit, um, well cameraed areas. Mm -hmm. So uh, keep that in mind, you know, so if you can do any of those things, uh, you're less likely to have some of that crime. Of course. And uh I'm sure after night to night, uh, you said telling a trusted neighbor, a trusted friend, is that you know everybody's you know they're keeping an eye out for their neighborhood, and if, of course if they do see something, they are you know reporting it, um, and you know of course night, like I said night to night, get to know your neighbors and kind of watch out for each other. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so um, the police department, I'm sure, is you know always looking for more people to help with. All the things that the police department does, you said Ramsey does a little bit differently. Police officers are at, you know, all those medical calls. Um, there are a couple positions available at the police department. Can you tell me some more? Sure, yeah. We've had uh, a couple of open positions. Uh, we've had a couple of folks retire over the years. Uh, many of our uh, staff, uh, both police officers and, and non-sworn members of our department, have been with the department for a long time. I've been there for 23 years now. Uh, we have a lot, a lot of long-time employees, but uh, they do retire, and through attrition, we have some openings come up, and we did have two openings. We're now down to uh, one position, mm -hmm. open and available. Um, I think that we're not different than many other agencies just uh, across the, not only the, the state, but across the country that are um, looking for workers. Mm -hmm. So I think the last check that I did, there were 130 open positions for police officers in the state of Minnesota. Um, so we're, we're just one of those 130, mm -hmm. uh, which is kind of uh, a change in times, uh, going back 23 years. But when, it, when I was applying for a job, there was two to 400 applicants for one open mm -hmm. position. Wow. And we're, it's quite a change over, the, over that time period. Of so. course, of course. Um, it, that's just kind of how time works. Things kind of change a little bit. Yeah. Um, so what would an ideal candidate for uh, the City of Ramsey Police Department look like? Yep. Uh, well, we, we want somebody that fits the community um, and fits our department and is able to problem solve and uh, is able to uh, enforce the law in a fair and uh, consistent manner. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, we have a lot of requirements. I don't want to go through all oh, of them. Oh, I'm sure. I, oh, I, like, the, the amount of, exactly, I think that's a great way to state it, is uh, just the, the sheer amount of situations. There's We are not running low on time, but the, the show is only an hour long. So, <laughs> um, so a, a fun thing um, for the police department uh, that I just want to mention real quick is an upcoming Battle of the Badges event uh, coming up with the Anoka uh, Police Department. Can you... 
Fill me in with all the details. Yeah, so this year we're going to have a what's called a Battle of the Badges. It's a hockey game, uh, Ramsey Police Department uh, versus Anoka Police Department. It'll be at the Anoka Ice Hockey Arena on 7th and Bunker there. It's going to be Friday, August 25th, mm -hmm. and uh, it, it'll be a fundraiser, um, for. and the benefits this year will go to uh, Officer Eric Grubner's family. Um, Officer uh, Grubner passed away last year. He was a member of the Anoka Police Department. Uh, he was a resident of the city of Ramsey, um, friends with both our community and Anoka's, mm -hmm. uh, as well as our officers. So um, an important event, uh, but one of the opportunities at this event will be free to the public. Mm -hmm. uh, there will be uh, some opportunities for fundraising, donations, stuff like that, but completely free for the public to attend, uh, seven to eight that evening they're gonna have skate with a cop mm -hmm. so I think that'll be great it, notice it wasn't skate with the chief uh, <laughs> but it is skate with a cop there will be police officers there yes to, to skate, skate with, with. <laughs> yeah um, so that's from 7 to 8 and then I think the game is at uh, 8 to 9 15 mm -hmm. so that'll be right here in a, in uh, on the border of Anoka and Ramsey there on 116 and 7th Avenue so fantastic mm -hmm. well I want to thank you so much for appearing on live and local and uh, as always appearing on QCTV when we ask it's uh, you're a great resource to have in the community I'm just gonna throw more kudos this way okay. and uh, now I'm um, blushing all right thank you <laughs> well I'll thank you again uh, so uh, we have one more package uh, to show you um, produced by Corey Lang uh, if you're looking for a way to spice up your summer beverages he has a solution for you so let's check it out <music> Whether you're into cocktails or mocktails, Summer Lakes Beverage has you covered. Offering a wide variety of flavors, Summer Lakes Beverage specializes in craft cocktail mixes made from fresh ingredients. So everything started with bootleg. This was our original mixer. All natural, fresh squeezed, lemon, lime, orange, blended fresh garden mint leaves, um, simple syrup, and just a little bit of egg white combined in there. And you can see the all natural, fresh mint leaves submerged right in there. So no fake ingredients, uh, no imitation, anything. This is as fresh as it gets. Summer Lakes Beverage, born and raised in Ramsey, Minnesota, but distributed far and wide. Hey, today we're hanging out with the Zimmerly family, Alyssa, Jessica, and Joe. These are the minds behind these delicious cocktail mixes. Hey, as I watch Joe demonstrate how these cocktails are made, let's get a little backstory. I love to make things from scratch, so I'd make things with all natural, fresh ingredients. Big batches at a time, we'd make our bootleg cocktail mix well in advance of, a, of a events and you know make gallons at a time, freeze them in small little quart containers and things like that and pull them out of the freezer, all natural and kind of fresh squeezed for people when they came over to the house. So enough people liked the beverages we made and different recipes that I kind of got a little idea that maybe we should see if the rest of the world would maybe enjoy this stuff too. So one thing led to another and we started Summer Lakes Beverage and, and have been having a lot of fun since. Summer Lakes Beverage has a robust website with a simple ordering process and a map that shows where you can find these products locally. Not putting the liquor in it opened up such a large market for us, um, but versatility of the mix and all people can enjoy it. Um, my boys love the bootleg. It's one of their favorite drinks at home. They have fun making little mocktails themselves for dinner and things like that when people are coming over for little special events. People that don't drink, don't want to drink, expecting moms can have a little something fun. It's not just another soda. Um, so it's really versatile as a mocktail, but then also in the um, addition of spirits. So bootleg and Luna and even the margaritas. I know everyone thinks tequila with margaritas, but love it with vodka, have it with gin, try it with rum, and certainly the bootleg and the Luna. With the bootleg, it plays on the fresh mint when you use rum as like a little bit of a you know twist on a mojito kind of a deal. I love it with gin. Um, the juniper plays around with the uh, botanicals of the mint and that kind of thing. So in the Luna, you can use different spirits as well. And that's what I really love about the mixes. You're not locked into just one thing. So you can change your cocktail 100% by adding different spirits to it or leaving them out altogether just to have a really nice fun mocktail. All of these flavors were great, but I particularly loved the Luna Paloma as it paired extremely well with some street tacos on the patio. Hey, cheers and be on the lookout for Summer Lakes Beverage.
Well, that wraps it up for this edition of Live and Local from our beautiful city of Ramsey. I would like to thank all of our guests for joining us on our live show. And of course, many thanks to my fellow producers and our entire crew that we have going on here. We've got a ton of people that work behind the scenes to bring this production to you. And it is a scorcher out here today. So thank you so very much to our crew for being out on the warmest sunny day um, and joining us here. And of course, to you, all of our viewers for tuning in and learning so much more about your wonderful city of Ramsey. If you would like to learn more about what's going on in our other three member cities of Anoka, Andover, and Champlain, be sure to check out the QCTV website at qctv.org. We're also streaming on YouTube and Facebook, bringing you high school sports, parades, all sorts of wonderful stories. And of course, like I said, you can check all those out on our website at qctv.org. Thank you again so much for tuning in, and we will catch you next time on the next edition of Live and Local.